video, you'll be educated on how to create a classic razor fade pompadour and how to shape a full length beard. So I'm taking a half a horseshoe section now, so I can work on one panel, and then as I move on, I will continue on my horseshoe section and cut as I go. I'm gonna start with the clippers. So I'm gonna start working from the nape at a 45 degree angle with my clipper over comb and just keep moving up the head. Just keep working backwards at a, at a slight angle working towards the occipital bone. So from the hairline down to the occipital bone. That's my goal. And don't worry about if you miss any little bits or you cut little bits off here because we're going to cut that off anyway. So just kind of work vertically with your comb just to really get a nice flat fade. So what I'm trying to do now is just getting rid of all the base hair that I don't need. Just hack it off and start with a clean palette. Now that I have my base guide in, I'm going to add a number one to my clipper guide and work upwards from the scalp. Still following the diagonal shape to his occipital bone that I've created. The reason why I clip over comb before I do this is just to clean up my section just so I can see what I'm doing. Now that I've done the sides, I might just clip up the top just to get that out of my way while I take vertical sections around the perimeter. Now I'm just going to take a vertical section just to get rid of the majority of this bulk that I don't need either. As you move forward, Slightly pivot your angle towards the hairline just to conserve length at the very furthest part of the hairline. Now I'm going to scissor over comb this white line out of his hair. Try to move the comb very slow and the scissors very fast. That way you get a very clean blend. If you move the comb too quickly you'll see notches and lines in the hair. Keep working up trying to create a square shape with the fade because he has very blonde 
uh, hair, it sticks out, it shoots out. So we've got to create that square shape up here. I'm going to scissor over comb all the way up to make a nice square shape, just like this. Um, I like to work downwards from the head, I don't like to work up. When I work up, I tend to create lines, so I work downwards to avoid that. So I work from longer to shorter. So I'm going to knock this line out and square up the hair all the way around, and then I'm going to grab a zero and a half and actually blend all of that into what I've recreated. I like to keep the hair wet when I scissor over comb because I create shape when I scissor over comb. You know, so I'm creating shape all the way up here, a nice square shape. So keep it, constantly keep it wet, especially because it's a blonde head of hair. So it just dries up quite quickly. With the comb, drag it directly up. Don't V in or out. And as you get higher in the scalp, you'll notice that you actually stop hitting the scalp. That's how you create a square shape, just directly up. Not in, not out, don't veer in any direction, just directly up. I like to keep a rhythm when I scissor over comb, so I never stop snipping my scissors. Otherwise I'll kind of lose the rhythm. It's like a drummer. You've got to keep a rhythm, a beat in your head to keep the scissor going. It's not completely random, even though it looks kind of random, what I'm doing, it's not. I have this rhythm and this idea of how I'm snipping in my head. So, me, the reason why I spin the hair around or use mirrors to, use my, um, to see my angles is just the silhouette. The silhouette tells you what is shape, what shape is good and what shape is bad, what to cut and what not to cut. So I can see that I need to cut a little bit more off these little corners here, um, but I won't touch that just yet because I'm going to do that when the top comes down. Um, there are little bits and pieces here and there, but I'm actually going to go over that later with the clipper of a comb. Um, but for now, I'm actually going to go uh, zero and a half around the corners here, around the edges. So I'm shaving the hair from the nape to the occipital bone, just right here. Just, just below the occipital bone. I do just below so I can actually fade to the occipital bone. So I'm creating a line just below, then I'm going to fade it just so I'm not going above the occipital bone, which will make the head go kind of in at a different angle. So this gives me the perfect square shape. So yeah, I don't want to go in on the round of the head, I want to go with the round of the head. So I want to go directly up from the most widest point of the head, which is right here. So I'm creating an intentional line to show as a guide. So this line in here that I've created is very intentional. This will create a guide for me to follow all the way through the other side of the head. So yeah, so now, if I didn't have this line right here, I wouldn't know where to actually finish my line. As a barber, I like to have more than just one pair of clippers. Uh, each pair, pair of clippers I have does uh, something specific to my, my taste. It's kind of like a, a hairdresser with scissors. I also have many scissors myself, but I like to have you know specifics. Everything has a specific role that I, uh, I use it for. You know, some clippers use it just for beards, other for, for hair, other for fading. You know, This just helps me.
Now that I've created the shape that I wanted and the desired length, I'm actually going to just refine, to keep refining the shape. It's a bit through here, a bit through there, just to complete the sides. Clip over combing allows me to have more space to see what I'm doing. This comb is quite large. It gives me more of a, uh, a canvas to work on. So I slide the comb in and I can see right now that there's a little bit of a weight line right there and I don't need to cut anything below. So it tells me where to start cutting hair. Yeah, if I do scissor over comb, it's a bit more of a, a refining technique directly up. So you have to go about your wits. This just gives you a cleaner canvas, more reliable. Much more reliable. Done. So I work up and down, up and down in different ways. Um, but in doing that, uh, it gives me a better fade, as you can see. Um, and normally for me, because I'm trained in it, it actually takes me no time to cut hair at all. It's actually quicker. Um, I tend to use all of my tools in a unique way. Uh, everything has a purpose and has a, has a reason for use. Um, and yeah, that's the end result of the fade. All right, now we're gonna start with the top. Well, this length's gonna come off now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take horizontal sections and connect it back into what I've already cut. Okay, so I've left length up here for the particular reason of blending it in, yeah? All back. Everything is gonna meet this point. Okay, so everything's gonna come back. Obviously gotta keep it nice and wet. Horizontal sections, starting from the back, working backwards. So everything is gonna meet this one first section. So I'm going to point cut this to just help blend it in and add a bit of texture. Nothing too dramatic. I like to blunt cut just to soften up the line that I've created, just so it's not so blunt and harsh. And then I quickly just connect it so it doesn't look like it's all clumpy and weird. So cutting everything directly back pulling everything into the crown to conserve length, obviously, at the hairline. Okay, I like to create a focus point at the front, conserving the length here and eliminating the weight here. So I want the hair to come forward and back, a pompadour. Well, you want all the length in the front and the weight in the front, not at the back, not at the crown. This way you get the length the client requested. If you remember the amount of length we said we're gonna take off, you give them that length they request, yet taking a lot of this off without them really noticing. Now that we've created the length, the desired length, I'm gonna go through this and take some of the bulk out, because obviously this crown area is a bit, you know, a bit heavy. I'm literally just grabbing rough sections, yeah, and just deep point cutting, getting that bulk out, because the bulk will weigh it down and certain parts will stick up, certain parts will sit flat. So when that happens, the parts that are sitting flat accentuate what sticks up. So you'd rather just blend it all in together from the side up into the top. Kind of like this, yeah? So by taking rough sections and deep point cutting, this will help blend in all the weight through here 
which is sitting flat and accentuating the crown. So what we want to do is we want to make it all, almost using his crown and his cow's licks to accentuate the haircut. So instead of it sticking outwards this way, you want to keep cutting it to create the shape with it sticking out. Kind of very similar to Asian hair. Six right out, so you've got to almost manually cut the cow's licks to fall into a shape. This is when the visual aspect of cutting comes into play. This is not very technical. This is what I see and I cut. Mixing between scissor over comb, clipper over comb, and cutting through my fingers, I'm just gonna blend in the sides to the top. And you see what I'm about to do. If you notice how I'm holding my comb, my little finger is working as a guide, as a, a barrier between the hair. So I'm not using this, the, the comb, I'm using my finger to almost rise up away from the head as I move up. This will give me the creative shape that I desire, yeah? If so you watch it, the pinky will push away from me. It gives me a bit more reliability with my comb. I like the amount of weight he has in his hair. He doesn't have too much bulk. So I just want to add a bit of texture and a bit of, uh, and reduce a bit of the weight. So now that I've gotten the desired look, the desired finish, just keep the hair off the face and then start the beard. I don't like to, you know, style the hair and then go down to the beard. Because when you style the hair, it kind of just indicates you finished. So before I style, we'll do this beard and then I'll style. Before I do the beard, I always like to keep a bit of oil in there. It gives it a bit of hydration. It actually allows you to really visual the, visualize the haircut so you can comb it out, comb it through. And it really puts it into its position before you cut. So I'm using the Seb Man Groom right now. Two good dollops. Does the trick right. And really work it in. You rather get it from roots to ends, scratch it into the scalp, really work that in, yeah? Not just the beard. It's very good for your skin too. So scratch it in, really comb it through with your fingers, spread it out, circular motions, really work it in there. And then just brush it into its natural state. And then comb it through. Comb it into the, the, the position you want to cut it in. Yeah? You can kind of see the shape taking form as you comb it out. I'm gonna start with this area of the beard. Holding the comb at an angle will prevent me from cutting any length by accident. So we wanna conserve this length, not cut it. So you just wanna feather all this off. Okay, with the beard, I, I don't use guards, I freehand it. So I like to oh, just shape it up like that. Holding the clippers upside down like this and going downwards just feathers out all the hairs that are sticking out. Not getting rid of the length, getting rid of all the frizz and fluff. Now I'm gonna hot towel the scalp, just so when I put the blade over the skin, almost wipe it over the skin, just so you don't cause any redness or any discomfort, and just slowly and briefly hold it over the nape. You just wanna heat up the skin, you don't wanna burn the skin. Okay, so once you put a hot towel over the skin to really 
soften and relax the skin and clean all the, the, the cream off it. You're essentially done. You just need to, to finish it off with the protector, which is a really cool shaving cream. Keeping some boiling water around is, uh, is key. And I like to use a brush, obviously. Um, so I like to have a little bowl handy and really work this into the cream using circular motions. Using a brush and a bowl really helps bring out the best of the product's performance on the skin. Lather the skin up in circular motions, like so. We're not going too high up. We're only going around the edges. So just nothing above the occipital bone. Like you would shave a beard, just stretch the scalp up as tight as you can and very softly, gentle strokes, short gentle strokes. When you shave, you'd rather keep the skin nice and stretched out, almost flat, just so when the blade runs over the skin, you're not gonna cut or graze over a bump. So when the blade goes over a flat surface, it cuts perfectly, all right? So move the client's head forward when you're working with the nape and stretch the skin down to make it extra tight. Finish off with the gem. This is just going to stop the skin from getting any uh, any more red or any discomfort or cause any ingrowns or redness. Just get that in there. Really massage it into the scalp. You really want to push that product into the pores. Now that that's done, what you have to do now is just blend in the scalp into the existing haircut, just with a pair of mini clippers. Today I'm going to be using the Hero, which is a really strong hold, very reworkable gel. Really work it from roots to ends, get it all the way through, you don't want to miss any part. That's it.